coming up here since 2011. Peers really changed my life because it, uh, they've, God really found me in a dark place and uh, he picked me up and through different friends and, you know, through leadership, through peer, I was able to, you know, grow into the man that I am today. Another really important thing for my growth in peer was uh, small groups. I started off in uh, Marcus's small group way back in the day. My family wasn't always there for me and, and uh, during that time, Marcus and Shane were huge impacts on my life and uh, they were there for me when, when things were really tough and really dark in my life. And um, when even my friends, you know, were, weren't necessarily there for me, they were there for me. And, and through that hardship, I was able to kind of minister to other people who were going through similar things that I was going through. I considered this my home more than my own house. I, I wanted to be here. I wanted to be with, you know, the people in my small group or the people in the small group that I was a part of. I, I, I cherished that time, you know, over everything. Leading my own small group further down the line was a huge blessing for me um, and a huge step that I think that any, everyone should take, you know, to to get involved because I think that it's very important to um, to foster leaders once you become one yourself. And I think that Pure is a great place to be poured into, but also to once you've grown to pour into others. I led a small group for a year and it was one of the best, one of the best years of my life. And I was able to create, you know, long lasting relationships that I still have today and create a family for myself when my family wasn't, you know, always there for me. So it was a great experience. Over the past, you know, seven years, peers really turned me into the man that I am today. And I, I keep coming back because you know this is this is home for me this is where I've been this is where I really started to follow God and I think that you know there's something special about pure and and what it has for people that are just starting out people that have been here for a long time you know there's so many opportunities you know to grow here and I think that you know growth is really important continuing to come back and continuing to challenge yourself and grow and to be involved you know I think that's why I'm still here is because there's still more for me here I think that you know staying and and fostering my relationship with, with people and you know hearing Jakeem's word and, and God's word and staying in and staying plugged in is the most important thing to to keep that fire going in your relationship with God. My name's Caleb and this is my story. What's going on pure? Woo! That was absolutely whack guys. This is the 10th birthday of pure it is the decade party make some noise for yourself man um we are super pumped for tonight and just super excited for and have been planning and dreaming um for what tonight would hold not just to celebrate 10 years but to um, really, man, just to come together in a community and celebrate just what God has done. Man, there was just um, one thing I wanted to share, man. You've been hearing stories and stories, um, and Marcus came, and KG and Shane, and um, Shelby, and Caleb, and Karina came and shared their stories. Man, because God has been up to a lot, man, and the story here at Pure has been um, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. But this is just what I wanted to kind of um, start this off by saying is this, man, that whether you've been here for 10 minutes or if you've been here for 10 years, that your story is important to God and that your story is a part of pure. Your story is a part of this community. Man, we are so, so glad for tonight, man. So that is my plug for Decade event, right? A little hype, man, for sure. Um, guys, uh, for those that don't know, my name is Jakeem. Super excited. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Love the love. I, I, found, I found out today I became a hot dog, so uh, I don't know if anybody ever tried it, but yeah. So, huh? Me too. What, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, for real. A lot of, yeah, so pretty cool, right? So that was uh, interesting. Um, but anyway, guys, once again, we're just super pumped that you're here. Um, I do want to just give a quick update because um, for announcements, for those that want to go to Laurel Woods, their Saturday is actually this Saturday, just for the heads up, because they were saying, oh, what Saturday is that? That's this Saturday coming up. And after service today, we're going to have some other hangs and some party. But if you're interested in going, which that means everybody should go, they're going to be in the North venue for about 15 minutes, giving some information of what this Saturday is going to look like. Guys, do not miss it. Um, lastly, before we dive in, um, 
if this is your first time hanging out with us, like Shane said, I'm not gonna have you raise your hand because I feel like that's sometimes awkward at certain places, but I met a lot of you guys in the lobby. Man, I'm super glad that you're here. First time seniors, I'm glad that you're here. Hope that you're having a blast. We have a gift for you. Don't leave without getting it. We wanna connect with you and just say, yo, welcome home. So um, that's that plug. Tonight, once again, man, we've been talking about stories, and as we've been journeying around this idea of talking about stories, um, I was asked, you know, that, or we came to around some conversations that um, many people really don't know my story. I've never had the opportunity to really kind of share my story, and as I teach, um, most weeks I share a lot about my history, my backstory, but um, just kind of the full, complete, I was actually sharing a moment, and they were like, wow, I never knew that, and I said, well, how do I talk so much and don't get a chance to you know, be vulnerable and transparent, and I want to have that opportunity. So that's what I have the privilege and opportunity um, to tonight. And um, if you guys just mind giving me 25 minutes, I would love to share with you uh, just a little bit of my journey, my faith journey. Um, and more importantly, um, as we'll see, not really my story, but what God was doing in my story. Um, so, all right. That's good. Also, on that note... Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for this space and this time. Thank you, God, for um, opportunities to be in community. God, thank you for writing us a story. God, for, for being the one that shapes and molds our lives, God, and um, really doing some amazing things. God, I pray tonight um, that you would um, move me, God, and you speak. And God, as I share my experiences, really not in my story, but in your story that you were creating for me, God, that, um, that you would just move on our hearts, God, that you would provoke us and challenge us and um, draw us ultimately closer to you. So God, we thank you for this time, this space, and we love you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Um, before I kind of dive in, I'm going to read a passage because you guys know I absolutely love the Bible. And even though I'm going to share my testimony, um, I, I, I got to go to some Bible. So I'm going to read a quick passage from Galatians 2.20. And the reason I'm going to read it um, is because of this is um, I really believe that this is kind of like my life verse. This is the verse that I kind of um, want my life to look like. And when you're going to hear it really soon, and the people that know me know that I probably fail at this a lot. But at the same time, I think the people that know me, um, I would hope also say that he does strive for this a lot, man. It's actually the, the, uh, the, the, the verse that I have tattooed on me. It's Galatians 2.20. And this is Paul talking, and he's saying this. He says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And why I love this and um, really, really kind of resonate with this passage is because if you were here with us a couple weeks ago as we walked through the book of Acts, we all know that Paul had a backstory, right? He had, he had a pretty kind of dark and messed up past. And, but, but even in this moment, this is probably written in about 50 AD. And what he is, uh, I love that he can say this with such boldness because what he recognizes is this, is that even though I've had a backstory and a past, I know that God's not done with me yet. And as we know and we look and we talked about a lot of his journey as he did missionary trips and traveled and impacted people, what it really resonated was this, is that I know I have a backstory, I know I have a past, I know I have some failures, but I know God's not done with my story. And not only is not God not done with my story, God is shaping and making not my story, but his story in my life. And that is, like I said, man, what I aim for as I live, but we're going to get into that. So let me take it back. I feel like this is like a sitcom. It'd be like, ring, 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 like he was born in. No. Um, but for those that don't know, man, I'm actually a local kid. I grew up right here in uh, Fontana. I moved here in the third grade. Before that, I lived over in Rancho, man. And um, I grew up right here, and it was my, my mom, my dad, my little sister and myself, man, and uh, we, we lived through life. There's going to be some pictures up as you can kind of see my family and a lot of the different highlights of my life, man. And um, 
Yeah, oh gosh, jeez. Uh, um, but yeah, man, it was me and my family, my baby sister, myself. I actually have some older siblings, but they are um, a little, uh, not a little bit, a lot older than myself. And a lot of them are already out of the house growing up. So I love them. They have some places in my story. But as for tonight, I'm not going to try to highlight too much. Um, because like I said, my oldest was 16 years older than me, just to give you a snapshot. Well, Man, I grew up right here in Heritage, um, grew up right around the corner, and um, the IE has been my home, Fontana's been my home. I went to Etiwanda High School, class of 07, make some noise, Chia, Chia, and everybody else, I'm sorry, go ahead, make some noise for yourself if you want to. All right, for sure, okay. Um, but yeah, so, um, like I said, went to school right up the street, this, is, this has been my home. Um, another part, just to kind of give you some insight into my life and my family, man, we grew up in church. I grew up going to church, and um, I would, I, I had one of those families that, man, we went to church, and I, I grew up at a, at a black church. Anybody for me with black church? Anybody? Okay. Um, so that means, that means it wasn't an hour or an hour and a half that when you went to Sunday, it was a day long. Like, we, we went for a long time. Um, my mom was involved, so we were there weekly, man, every Sunday, and um, the reality is, is this, is that I would say, if I had to look back, I would say I had a relationship. I would say I had uh, a relationship with Jesus, and God was um, a part of my life, one, because I, I went to church, and um, some of it was just, you know, I would come out, and it would look, excuse me, um, like I said, I had a relationship with Jesus, but, but ultimately, as I look back, it was really shallow. It was really extremely shallow. That, that, like, even though, like I said, I would raise my hand, I'd worship, I'd go, and I, I would even engage. A lot of it was probably to um, impress, like, mom or the Sunday school teacher or whatever. Like, oh, I have all this little, like, I know this Sunday verse or this. We used to have memory verses. Anybody know memory verses? Come on, somebody. <laughs> um, so so I, I would try to do those things, right? So, but, but ultimately, my relationship with Jesus would prove shallow. And it would prove shallow. And, and where my story and my journey, where I'm going to kind of really pick up. Um, it was about my sophomore year in high school. But my sophomore year in high school, man, I completely start to live life my own way. It is when I, I rebelled and, and I can't even say I turned away from God because the reality, I was really living in delusion because I was still going to church because I really lived in the house that if you live in my roof, you go into church on Sunday. Um, so I still, you know, was going to church and I would still sing the songs, but I really had completely ultimately decided that I was living life my own way. This is how, this is how messed up or captured I was, man. It was, it was to the point that I would make these little, like, uh, make these little deals with God. Like, God, there's no way I'm going to be able to stay a virgin until I'm married, so I'll give you till I graduate. Like, it was like, it was just stupid stuff. Like, oh, yeah, you know what, son? Even though I said do that, you know, that's... A, that's a great, like, like it was, I, I lived in this delusion. Life was lived by my standard, by my own rules. Well, after I graduated 2007, man, that just continued to get worse. I, I, there's no picture up there, but as it says, it says uh, uh, parental advisory, because I'm not going to dive too much. But this, was, this is basically my life, guys. From, from uh, 2005 to 2010, it was this. It was smoke, drinks, party, sex, repeat. Smoke, drink, party, sex, repeat. That was my life. That was my life wrapped up on Sundays, going to church and singing songs. And this is, this is what I kind of, as I look back, and this is kind of a, a point, and maybe, maybe you can see yourself a little bit in my story or have seen yourself in my story, but, but this is what I kind of came to reason. As I kind of look back and I think about those times, man, it was this. It was that when I stopped seeking God, I was completely lost. But when I stopped seeking God, I was completely lost. My life was filled with a bunch of nothing, which a bunch of waste, a bunch of filth, a bunch of stuff that actually I look back and I'm like, wow, God, that was, you know, 10 years ago. Like, geez, it's not that long ago. But, I, but my life was filled with a bunch of junk and I recognized, man, that, that, that even though I grew up in church and I had this relationship or I, I, I listened to the music or whatever it was, that ultimately I, when I completely decided to do life my own way, when I stopped seeking God, I was completely lost. I was completely lost. 
So here I am, like I said, man, I graduated 2007 and for, for my life, that's just kind of in the middle of how I was saying my parental advice, but there were some major life moments that would begin to take place. There were some major, major significant life moments that would begin to take place. And the first one being this, man, um, it was uh, August of 2008. I was falsely incarcerated for three attempted murders drug addiction, I mean drug addiction, uh, uh, gang enhancement, gun enhancement, all these other enhancements, um, looking at 175 years to life. I can't give too much of the backstory because I don't want to dive in, but if you have questions, come, come holler at me. I would love to share just more. That whole thing is a whole 30-minute testimony in itself. Um, but ultimately, basically, somebody said so I was somewhere that I wasn't. Ironically, I was actually working parking lot at the church. Come on. Praise God for an alibi. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Working at, working at the church of the Jesus that I'm not truly following. But, but this, is, this was the reality. I was, I was locked up, man, and I'm in this place. And I wouldn't say that it was a major shift what got me in the right direction with God. But, but it was kind of like this, this slight wake up or God trying to give me a nudge because it was in there that I started to remember, like, hold on, man, there's this Jesus and there's this passage, Romans 8, you know, 28, all things work together for the goals that love God and those that are called according to his purpose, right? And I'm like, but, but then I had to look back and like, bro, did you really, were you really loving God? But that's a whole nother conversation. But, but I found myself trying to remember some of the scriptures and I found encouragement and I was leaning on like into God and I was praying, right? And I had prayer mothers and people visiting, right? Cause you locked up, man, you can't see freedom and you don't have freedom and, or whatever. And you're like, uh, uh, I need some type of emotional stability. And I started to think back on the things that I had learned in church. But ultimately, man, I was released January um, 27th, 2009, six months of my life gone. I turned 19 on the inside. Um, but once I got out, I'm super pumped to get out. And you would hope or think that this was the moment that everything was just like, you know what? Jesus, I stand on you. Right. But it wasn't. The reality is it wasn't. That, that I think of it like this, that if that was like a moment where God was trying to get my attention or wake up, it was kind of like the alarm that the moment I got out, January 27th, man, I pushed snooze on the alarm clock. And I was back to living life my own way. And I went back to smoke, drink, party, sex, repeat. Smoke, drink, party, sex, repeat. Well, another major event would come from that in March of 2009, two months, two and a half months after being out, man, um, uh, one of the young ladies that I'd be involved with um, would find out that she's pregnant. She would find out that she's pregnant. And I was to be expecting a baby, Kamaya Faith Morgan, man. And when it first happened, uh, this wasn't even a young lady that I'm dating, um, but we were just friends, and like I said, just kind of both just lost and doing stuff that we're not really supposed to be doing. Uh, so when it happens, man, it's unexpected, and we're bickering, arguing back and forth, and it's, you know, just kind of like it, it causes this big rift in, in the friendship and everything else, man. But ultimately, um, as we had discussed and we talked about a lot of this, man, it, it came to this place that we were like, we started to even to get excited about it. We started to, you know, like, okay, look, the reality is the reality, and this is what's coming, right? And um, November's coming, and she's on her way, so we need to get our minds wrapped around it. So, man, I prepared myself to be a father. She prepared herself to be a mother. We, we were ready for this, man. And even to the point excited, I was like, well, I'm about to have a little girl, right? I'm like, hey, mom, I'm sorry I didn't do it the way that, you know, the church is probably not happy right now. But there was a part of me that was, you know, ready to be expected for it or excited for it. July 27, 2009, she finds out she's having a miscarriage. She goes to the doctor and Kamaya doesn't have a heartbeat. Kamaya doesn't have a heartbeat. And from that Space for that time, man, I start to go into a, a moment of grief and of sorrow because it's like, well, at first it was like, dude, why are we here? We're arguing. What should we do? Keep, not keep, all this, like, all this nonsense. And then I wrap myself around, okay, I'm ready to embrace this. And then to experience this extreme loss. And my heart was broken. I was in a complete place of grieving. I was in a complete place 
of grieving. But so here we are in this place and after embracing it for a little bit and recognizing like, look, like, all right, like this is tough, but recognize, OK, well, then if there was any silver lining, it was like, look, well, dude, we can't I can't keep doing this. Right. My life has to get a little bit better. And I wish I could say it was like Jesus, but it wasn't even Jesus I was leaning into yet. It was, all right, I need to get better in my life. I need to prepare. I wasn't in school. I was like, okay, time to go back to school. So at this time, man, I start to um, head out to Ohio, to Central State University. And I'm going to speak to that in a little bit. But what I love about this, man, is as I'm, as I'm getting ready to go to school in Ohio at Central State University, what I do not know is that God is getting ready to absolutely rock my world. That God is getting ready to meet me face to face in a way that jail didn't do it, a miscarriage, a loss of a child didn't do it, but God is getting ready to encounter. And this is what I love. And if there's a point, and this can speak to anybody, is this, is that even when we stop seeking God, he never stops seeking us. And even when we stop seeking God, he never stops seeking us. And here's why, man, because God orchestrated this story and this journey. And um, there was one night, man, or one day I'm out there and I get invited to this Thursday night Bible study um, taught by who would be my mentor. His name is Dion Sampson, still really connected with the dude today. And man, it was in this Bible study and the way that he just loved that absolutely transformed my life. That I had met Jesus, that I had met the love of God, that I've met love um, uh, and seeing the love of God displayed in a way as way he brought me in. That was just absolutely something I never experienced. And there was this moment of uh, in a worship night, man. And I remember being out there. They had this thing called a worship night. And we were just kind of worshiping. It was like all night thing. Um, but we're just kind of singing and worshiping, man. I'm in the court and I'm just pouring out my heart. I'm pouring out my heart. And I'm saying, like, I don't know how I got here. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what this looks like. I don't even remember when it was. Like I said, the whole thing was delusion. My whole mindset was, God, I'm still following. But like, no, you're not. Stop. And I'm in this place. And I'm like, I don't know how I got here. I'm experiencing, you know, six months. I've, I have, uh, I've been in jail. Like, I've lost a, uh, uh, an ex- like a, expecting a child. And I've lost it. Like, God, I'm just grieving. And I'm just kind of pouring out my heart. And I'm pouring out my heart. And God meets me that day, man, in a way that I have, can never, ever have yet to really put words to it. I've never, ever experienced it a night like that, man. But God met me. He encountered me in a crazy way because he took me 2,500 miles to this small school in a place called Zeno, Ohio. And I love it, man. So as I kind of keep going, man, and, and here I was in this place, man, that I fell in love with Jesus again. Man, I fell in love with Jesus again, man. And I was attending his, his Bible study, man. And the reality was this, is that even though I still had a bunch of junk to deal with, five to six years of just, of just stuff that I had to deal with, I was at least in this place that I was seeking Jesus again. That I was seeking Jesus Again, man, and I loved it because it was in these moments that I found myself, man, not just seeking Jesus with, from this encounter with Jesus, but he began to grow me. He began to grow me. And here, here's the reality, man, and this is, this is what I recognize, is, man, is that this, is that when we seek God, we find him. And when we find him, we grow. And when we seek God, he says, you shall find me. And when we find him, we grow. So here I am, man. I'm in this place of growing, and I'm growing again, and I'm taking this relationship. I've embraced it, and haven't really looked back. Now, I got to still be honest and transparent, even though the Lord was dealing something spiritually, academically, not so much. So um, <laughs> January 2011, man, I decided to return home because ultimately I was just wasting a bunch of time and wasting a lot of money. Um, so mom was like, get your butt back home right now. Okay. I was like, but mom, I'm encountering Jesus. I don't care. Get home. Okay. I got Jesus here. Right. So 2011, um, I start coming home, man. And as I come home man, I start, uh, I, I get back into the church that I grew up at and, um, I start serving and I start, um, you know, just kind of giving my life away a little bit. And we'll speak to that in just a second, man. But I had some really cool moments from serving with Jesus. 
that I would spend the next couple of years kind of serving and just saying, you know what, God, like, I still remember that encounter 2,500 miles away, and I'm not letting it go, and I just allowed Jesus to be the leader and director of my life. So I found myself in places of serving, creating, starting to get involved in ministry, um, and I loved it, man. I absolutely loved it. But this is, this is, this is what it started to, to remind me as I look back is this, is that so not only um, when we seek God, we find him. When we find him, we grow. The reality is when we grow, we serve. And when we grow, we give. And the way that we give with Jesus is by giving our life away. That a life with Jesus is meant to be given away. And it's meant to be given away by living for others, by serving others. So, like I said, I had these really cool moments, but it was more than just a moment. And God kind of began to um, not just that it wasn't just this moment or season of serving or just get involved or zeal. But what he really began to do, man, was spark this sense of purpose in my life. This sense of purpose in my life. Go ahead, Ruby. You shut it off. (laughs) This sense of purpose and direction for my life. Something like I had never experienced. I remember my time. At school, man, it was, you know, I wanted to be a business major to go make money, but nothing was really stuck or nothing really was like, this is what I want to go do. But this at this moment, it was, man, I feel like I know what I was made to do. I feel like I was know what I was made to do, man. I really, from serving, found purpose in my life. And I felt myself or found myself becoming the person that God had called and created me to be. So, story continues, man, and from this, um, what happens is I say, look, I'm still young enough, Uh, I'm a little bit older now, but it's not too late, it's time to go back to school, and I didn't want to kind of like, just to go to like, any type of like, you know, the Bible college at the, behind the local church, I was like, no, like, I'm still young, I want to go to a university, I want to go, you know, I want to go like, get me a degree. So, um, at that time, man, I went. Um, was did some looking around, searching, and from a friend of mine, found Life Pacific College. Man, yep, come on, somebody. Um, and I found Life Pacific College for those that um, were here a couple weeks ago. I actually just graduated in May. Praise God, come on, somebody. <laughs> Praise God. Um, yeah, man, but uh, I found Life Pacific College, man, and it was here that, um, that God began to even throw more community, really create some really cool moments, man. And um, I found myself really becoming, once again, being shaped and becoming the person that God had called me to be. And it also created some other really unique opportunities. And what happened was, man, in 2015, um, one of my mentors, and some of you guys may know him, his name is Dan Stewart, um, I had an opportunity to go to Israel with him, man. So here I am. Um, this is my junior year of, uh, at Life Pacific, and I'm getting ready to go on a plane to Israel, man, and Israel was absolutely amazing. Um, had a chance to get baptized in the Jordan. That was pretty dope. I thought that was cool. Baptized with Jesus was baptized. Come on, somebody who, who wouldn't want that. Um, but I really like this moment because the reality was that I had been baptized when I was really young, but even though I was walking with Jesus for some time um, here when I, this was my, actually my first time I thought about it. I was like, this is my first time being baptized since really rededicating my life. So I thought that was um, kind of cool. But anyway, that's not the biggest part of why this is part of my story. Even though baptism is very important and next time we do baptism, get baptized. But, um, and it's in Israel and I'm in Israel with this team and um, I, I love the Bible and we're in the land of the Bible and God's really doing some cool things some real devotional moments, man. Well, what happens is this, man, I'm with Dan Stewart, who is uh, my professor, man, and um, Pastor Dan, um, who's the pastor at Water of Life. You guys all know Dan Carroll, okay? Well, yeah. Pastor Saint's father, anybody know? Okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody? Okay. You guys all know who he is. Anyway, they're out actually in Israel um, at the same time, man. We're in Jerusalem and they both don't like going into like the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It's this big traditional Orthodox, a lot going on church. They say, hey, we'll send the group in. We're just going to kick it and chill. And as they're sitting and hanging out, they create an internship from scratch. They create an internship from scratch, man. And as they create an internship, um, as we get back home, D. Stu comes and says, man, I had a conversation with uh, Pastor Danny. He wants to start an internship with Life Pacific. I want you to do it. And in September of 2000. And, geez, Louise, 15, <laughs> September 2015, um, I walk in to a meeting 
at Pure, actually. Yeah, and uh, I started interning here at Pure, man, and it was um, an absolutely amazing time because there's so much other things going on that, uh, that I can't really dive into, but just from like ministry hurt and some other hurts and some other spaces and things like that, that I was really in a, even though I was still seeking God and still spiritually like for Jesus, now I was dealing with some hurt and some pain of stuff that was just kind of beneath. But I came in into this community, started interning with uh, Shane. I started interning with Brenda and a lot of the staff in the, uh, that was there. Um, Man, and from this place, man, God just began to do some really, really cool things. He started to do some really, really amazing things, man. So I joined, like I said, as an intern in 2015 and came on staff. Shane uh, took a big risk and said, you know what, brother? You crazy, but um, let's give you a shot, man. And he brought me alongside him to help um, lead and care for this community here. And we did that for two years, um, and it was just an amazing time, and the people that I was able to connect with in the community, as you've heard in the stories, man, they just had just such a profound impact on my life, that it was just an amazing, amazing time, um, that God was doing some really cool things, man, and it was one of the most blessed and favored seasons that I've ever experienced, and I'm still experiencing. Uh, I thank God every day for it, man, so even later on, um, as we kind of move further, this past November, Pastor Shane, doing this for 10 years, said, you know what, man, it's time to, you know, transition. He felt like it was time and space, and he took an even bigger risk and threw me the keys and said, uh, don't mess up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but took a risk, man, and said, man, I believe as we kind of talked and my heart for young adults, and um, he saw something, and Pastor Matt saw something and said, man, look, I believe that you can care for and lead and steward this community. And November 2018, um, I came into this place of having an opportunity to be the ministry lead of this ministry, Pure. And once again, man, here I am in this place. Um, and I absolutely love it. I have the greatest job on the planet and do what I love with the people that I love. So here I am, man, becoming, I feel like, the person that God has called me to be. And if you guys know, our theme this year is never stop seeking, never stop growing, never stop serving, and never stop becoming. And here I am, man, I feel like I'm in the process of becoming the person that God has called me to be and living out purpose. And that's what I feel like he, and he's kind of still writing my story. But here's the reality, guys. If I can switch gears just for a little bit is this, is that pursuing purpose doesn't absolve you from pain. Pursuing purpose doesn't absolve you from pain. They need volunteers to work with the kids. My sister's out of a job. So she's taking all of my change. And she's bored. So she's just messing with stuff. No, I'm not. I'm counting She pulled it. all the paint off my wall. Your paint's been gone. All the freaking paint off my yes, wall. Yes, that's dude. exactly what I did. That sure is what I did. Yeah, it's been gone. She's laying on my bed. She never comes and hangs out with me. No, you're not listening to me. I, I'm what? You're not listening. What am I not listening to? I was trying to tell you that I think I'm going to volunteer at my church. The children's department. See, she doesn't have a job, so now she has to volunteer at churches to... That's, and that's a bad thing. I'm sorry that I wanted to let God use me. <laughs> she was never this saved when she had a job. <laughs> Last year, January 1st, 2017. New Year's. 18 months ago. In the midst of living out purpose and becoming the person that God had called me to be. My sister Asia, who was my best friend, who dealt with clinical depression the majority of her life. She was at home by herself. I was at a church event because it was New Year's. My parents were at a church event because it was New Year's. She wanted to stay home because she had work early the next morning. She had a a low moment and decided to end her life.
The reality is, guys, is that is something that I have to live with every day. Now, there's not a day that don't go by that I don't miss her. I don't think about her. I wouldn't, I'd be lying if I said there was moments where I just wanted to throw in the towel and just hang it all up and said, you know what? I'm over it. I'm good. I'll just live a mediocre life. I don't need ministry. I don't need Jesus. I don't need nothing. But Jesus had to stop me. And the reality was this, this man, that every day I have to choose to continue becoming the person that God has called me to be. I have to say yes to choosing to continue to become the person that God has called me to be. I have to say yes to God being the leader and the director of my story. I think about it in that passage in Galatians 2.20 when Paul says this. That I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but the life I now live, I live according to the faith of Christ Jesus. Is that, yes, I could stop and hang it all up, but the reality is this isn't my life to stop or to say no. This isn't my life to say yes, to give up on everything, but the reality is just like Paul, that my life is in Christ. And even in the pain, the hurt, and the grief, that I must continue to say yes to him writing my story. Why did I share this? The reality is God is writing in all of us a story. He's writing in all of us a story, and that story is all about us becoming the person that God has called us to be. However, the reality is, Many of you guys know if your stories are similar to mine or maybe different, the reality is some of our stories are different and really involve some really high highs, but very often involve some really low lows. That's truth. That's reality. But here is the point that despite the heartbreak, Despite the failures, despite the lows, God is still writing our story. And we can never stop becoming the person that God has created us to be. But God is still writing our story. And if you have breath in your lungs, God still wants to write your story. Bow your heads for me. Maybe some of you are like me and have experienced some really difficult or tragic moments in your life. Whether it be by bad decisions, painful loss, maybe you were just simply dealt a bad hand. You might be in the place, man, where you are ready to throw in the towel and give up. Maybe you've already thrown in the towel and give up and said, I'm done with this. But I'm here to say to you this, that God is not done with your story. God is not done with your story. In a moment, we're going to go back into worship. But before we do, maybe there are some of us here that have never given God permission to write our story. But tonight you want to give access to Jesus. You want to give Jesus access to your life and to write your story. 
Guys, reality is this. Our life in our own hands leads to pointless living. It leads to being lost. It leads to wandering. It leads literally to pointless living. But when we yield our life to Jesus, there is so much life. In the midst of hurt, in the midst of pain, there is so much life. We're going to go back to worship in just a few moments, but if that's you, and you're saying tonight, I don't want to live not becoming the person who God's called me to be. I don't want to live life just wandering and lost. But all heads bowed, I just want you to slip your hand up. But if you're saying tonight, man, that I want Jesus To write my story. Maybe this is you. Just go ahead and leave your hand up. Maybe this is you. Maybe there was a point where Jesus was writing your story, but at some point he took the pen back and said, you know what? Because of the hurt, because of the failure, because of bad decisions, because of some hard times, you know what? I don't want you to write my story anymore. I want to write my own story. Fast, I just want you to lift your hands up. Here's reality, guys. Guys, this comes by truly yielding to God. So I'm going to ask you to do one more thing for me. Why don't you go ahead and stand up? That I desire, man, Jesus to be the Lord, the writer of my story, the, the Lord of my life. Lastly, guys, I want to pray for you guys. I'm just going to ask you guys to come and meet me down here. Just wherever you are, just ask the person next to you, excuse me. I just want you guys to meet me down at the altar. I just want to pray for you guys. I just want you guys to repeat after me. That if you guys are in this place and you're saying, you know what, man, I need Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I need Jesus to write my story. That whether this is your first time or you need to rededicate, let's repeat after me. Jesus, my life is worthless without you. My life is a mess without you. God, I've made some mistakes. I've hurt people. I've offended people. I've made some really, really bad decisions. But God, today I'm asking you to come into my heart. God, I'm asking you to write my story. God, I'm asking you to direct my life. God, I want you to be the one that leads. I want you to be the one that's Lord over my life. And God, in all my failures, all my mistakes, God, I repent. Ask for forgiveness. God, that you would just transform my heart. Lord, I believe you are Lord. And I believe you are the Savior of my life. Jesus, I pray today. God, I, you guys are to repeat. Jesus. Jesus. I thank you for this group and this people, God, and how you've moved on tonight. And God, that you have not given up on us. God, that you have not.
turned away, but just like you have in my life, God, that even when we weren't seeking you, God, you sought after us. God, that you came after us. God, I just pray that as we have just prayed today, God, um, in this moment, as we yield to you, God, we lean into you, God, we give you permission and lordship in our life to write our story. God, that you'd walk with us, that you'd walk with this group. God, that you'd walk with each and every one of them. Lord, we thank you. I'm so excited for what you're doing. God, that you still have a story for them to write. God, they, can, they are still becoming the person that you have called and shaped them to be. Thank you for their life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, guys, this is what I want you guys to do. To the back left. I know we prayed together corporately, but I just want people to have an opportunity, a community here that just want to pray with you individually, and just love on you, care for you, just to remind you and encourage you and let you know that, man, look, you have a purpose, that God still has a story that he wants to write in your life. He still has a story he wants to write in your life. For the rest of us, guys, we're getting ready to go into a few more worship songs, and it's going to be about this. The first one, I just want you to take a moment. And just reflect on where you are in your story with God and allow him to meet you. And the second one, man, I want us to do this. I want us to celebrate that God is still writing our story, that we can still become the person that God had created us to be, that he has not given up on us, that he still pursues us. Why don't you guys stand with me? Jesus, thank you for this time. And Lord, as we worship you, that you would just have your way. That we could just experience and encounter you in an amazing way. In Jesus' name.
You're never gonna lay me down. Oh, no, no, you're never gonna lay. You're never gonna lay me down. Oh, you're never gonna lay. You're never gonna. Oh, if you believe that, down. sing it out. You're never. You're never gonna lay. You're never gonna lay me down. You're never gonna lay. You're never gonna lay.
just take a moment and make some noise, man, for Jesus. Man, God is so good. He is so good. And I slammed, man, just want to simply leave you with this, with this thought. I want to leave you with this thought. Guys, that God is still writing your story. That he's still writing your story and not just your story individually. He's writing your story as a community. And I love what God has done and what he's doing in this community, man. And I'm so pumped that so many of you guys, Joe and Destin, decided to come and kick it with us for the decade event. Man, but like I said, as we leave, remember this. God's still writing your story. It's not too late. You can still chase who God has called you to be, become the person that God has called you to be. Well, guys, the night is not over. We still got some more partying and celebrating to do. So this is what I want you guys to do, all right? I'm gonna have all you guys head out to the lobby. In the lobby, there should be some candy and some snacks, some desserts. Grab some snacks, candies, and desserts. But hold on, before you go, not yet, I'm gonna tell you, I'm just giving you instruction. Don't go yet, I'm gonna pray us out. But I want you to go grab candy, snacks, and dessert. There are gonna be a, some of us in here stacking chairs, and we're gonna have a dance party and kick it and hang out, um, and we're gonna have a good time. So, Jesus! Thank you for this time. Hold on real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jesus, thank you for this time, this space. And God, thank you for meeting us and counting us where we can worship you, where we can hear your word, we can share stories, where we can grow closer to you together. So God, we pray for this time and this space, and we're excited for even what you're going to continue to do for the rest of the night and for the rest of the year and with the rest of our stories. So God, we give you this time, this space, and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, Laura Woods meeting in North Venue. Don't forget about that either. Go grab some snacks, candy, and come back in here for a dance party. <laughs> hey guys, if I can get a few of us just to stay and stack chairs, grab your dessert, we're gonna stack some chairs and have a dance party, so don't go too far. If you got some hands, Stack your row, just stack your chair. We'll be good.